So in this um, video, I want to go over ingress and service mesh. So whenever uh, any cluster is set up, it, by default, um, in, ingress is not a part of the basic uh, Kubernetes installation. Although, um, like many vendors, when you take a solution from an external vendor, they have uh, all they have integrated uh, these. Um, so some of the ingress or service mesh features, for example, um, Google Anthos has it. And uh, also there is another product with by Docker and Mirantis that has uh, Istio as um, a service mesh. But most of the time, if you're installing it, it's not. it doesn't come as part of the control plane or the data plane. So what is uh, ingress and why do we need it? So because when you set up a cluster, you can you have a control plane, you have data plane, you will have your pods and services running in the cluster. So how how is, uh, for example, a client, right? If or somebody from outside, if they want to hit a service, you have to, you have to have a <coughs> endpoint. You cannot have somebody coming into the cluster from outside and hitting every service endpoint. That's the one important thing because that is major security flaw, right? So you want it to hit your load balancer from the outside. For example, you can have a wildcard, um, you know, like FQDNs, and then you can have multiple services and with the same um, the, uh, domain with a star so that anything you can put A dot service B, you know, multiple services can be running. So when it hits the load balancer, load balancer will route the request to the cluster. But load balancer cannot keep routing the request to all of various service endpoints because service endpoints can change if you delete a service or if you recreate it and parts keep on changing, right? These are all... Uh, this is something that IP is changed there, you know. So you need something between the load balancer and the service endpoint to route the request. And that is where Ingress comes in. So Ingress runs, the, the most common Ingress is the Nginx controller. So it comes with the controller and an Ingress. They can be installed on a separate worker node or they can be a part of the cluster, it doesn't matter. But basically what it does is it provides a security routing and load balancing to all the services. So how it works is when you hit the load balancer, load balancer has to be configured with the endpoints, whips of wherever the nodes where Ingress is running. And then, and the port, of course, 18 and 443, right? And it also provides SSL termination, which means that you can bypass, uh, the load balancer can be set to bypass uh, or pass through, and then, the termination will be at this ingress level. So in that case, anything inside the cluster, you know, like the communication between the ingress and the service will be, uh, will not be TLS, but anything bit, bit outside that will be uh, SSL. So there are a lot of good use cases and features where this can be used. But what is missing is there is no uh, term, uh, there's no TLS between these uh, between services, right? So if sorry, not pods. So if you have two services running, there is no TLS between them. Also, there are a lot of uh, if you there's no east west um, routing. So right now, if you're this, if you have two services, uh, let me go to the next one, right? So if you have two services, service one and service two. If service one wants to reach to service two, one and you still want um, all the security, then you one way is you go outside and you hit the, it comes back from the load balancer to the service because between uh, this these two services, there is no TLS in a regular ingress. So that's where service mesh comes in. What service mesh provides, and Istio is a very famous um, service mesh. What it provides is between two services. So everything still remains the same, but what you have in additional is a service mesh. Uh, set up so what and it still comes with the um, you know it's, it's it uh, it has a lot of um, components like Istio D and Istio Gateway and it has um, the envoys which run it's which are like us which is sidecar pattern which runs in the pod and that's how it detects you know that's why how it does the service discovery so in that so when now in this case what the benefit you get is there is east west traffic right and then it's secure there is a tls between these two so then you don't have to implement at every container level you don't have to implement tls if you want and also it provides uh, other features such as uh, 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 can canary deployments or which is called um, there is another thing which is called um, blue green deployment so that can all be configured at the level of service mesh where you can route 
some percentage of your request to one service. For example, if you're up upgrading it and between two versions, version one and version two, then you can set it up and configure in a service mesh to route the leave 25 percent to the newer traffic it can be done and also you know all those features at a very advanced level that's what is to provide so that's why service mesh can come in very handy and it's very useful when you really need that those kind of you know if you're running a big cluster and a lot of services but there can also be many challenges with the service mesh you know something like a lot of it, it becomes more complex and then you have to have your um, injection in the um, SDO injection into all uh, that can be done at the after the pod is deployed, right? So you have to have a injection into each uh, service and it will restart the pod. But what it will do is it will um, add a sidecar container, uh, which is um, Envoy container to your um, existing pod, and so that Envoy will help communicate between these two parts and maintain you know service discovery and all that but it can get complicated it can have multiple challenges uh, to resolve if you hit any issues so but there are so you have to see what is good for your environment but this is the latest um, in you know that's going around and just provides a lot of features especially for security so it's worth you know taking a look at it and trying it or implementing it So let's quickly look over the Istio service mesh. What does it look like, the architecture? So as you can see, it has a control plane. The piece, the control plane is basically, it has Istio D, which consists of pilot, citadel, and galley. And uh, you don't need to, like we don't need to go into the details of what it does, right? Because it's the control plane, it's the brain, and it has all the information about how it manages the cluster, like all the services. The key piece is the envoy. So the envoy, is a part of um, your or it's uh, you know so if this is a service then uh, you have multiple services running in your cluster right and as a part of the uh, the data plane of each um, service and so this is a service right and it has maybe in this case let's say it has one pod and pod has one container which is your application container so the istio injection what it does it uh, the it makes one one component the proxy runs as part of the pod so what it does is that's how it detects it's called the ny proxy so this is the ny proxy that runs in every uh, pod and it basically um it's kind of a sidecar pattern right and what it does it it has all the information so it does service discovery it does tls termination and health check and um a uh, lot of similar features this is this takes care of it so the as a, at an application level you don't have to do anything you don't have to add anything into your eml files the applications can run the similar way only during the deployment when the as part of the in injection this new proxy sidecar gets added to each pod and then that's how um, it uh, it achieves what uh, the goal is so some of the key features again are the traffic, right? It controls the fine grain traffic. It provides a lot of, uh, you know, circuit breakers, retries and fail failovers. And there's, of course, security is a main feature that people go for and it gives you accessibility to run the ESWAS traffic. Other components, so basically um, the daemon, this, so these are the main two components, right? This daemon is the control plane. It's not really something to go into de deeply into but envoy is the one that manages that that uh, is a part of your uh, implementation and, and that manages so if you run uh, if you after you install it it will be running a istio gateway there are may other components like istio gateway there will be an istio um the istio d right the daemon and the gateway and then because gateway is the one that uh, works with the daemon to gather the information and to route the request to the uh, envoys.